If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It sorry says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash and sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child should lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. We are in the midst of a... The beginning. What do you call that? A, well, it's a Patreon alliance stream. And I am going to read our intros. All right, so the first alliance that we have up is Rock of Ages, and the leader of that group is Misery Biz. Shout, Shout out to, to Mis Misery Biz in the house, gang shit. <laughs> okay, our picks is similar to other alliances uh, member week polls, where a member will be picked through drawing, and the lucky one will get to do a playlist for the poll. This time, Fortune favored the big homie Neil, a.k.a. fan to be stick fool. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, babe, did I read that really badly? <laughs> well, uh, continue. Okay, you read it. Read that name. Where? Fanda B stick. Fanda. I don't Fan know. Dab stick fool. Okay, see. <laughs> the no. winner of his R picks was Crippled Black Phoenix, The Invisible Past. The band is an English post rock, progressive rock, experimental rock formed in early in 2004 by Justin Greaves, who was formerly a drummer in several Doom and Sludge bands. Mm -hmm. Bless God. Bless mm -hmm. God you got out of that terrible genre, my boy. The band has published 12 studio albums so far, and the winner of songs from the 11th album, Ellen Gist, which featured several guest vocalists such as Jonathan Hooftane of The Invisible Past. We're making a custom to have the RPX winner tell why the song is important to them. They chose it for their playlist. Here's Neil's commentary on the song. So I chose that CBB song, B CBP song, because of the guest vocalist on the song. At the time the song came out, I just knew him as one of the guitarists for Tribulation and didn't know he could sing. Once I heard the song, I was really impressed by the performance, and it made me wonder why Tribulation never incorporated his singing into their music. Their style is developed in a way where I think incorporating some variety in vocals would benefit the band. It has definitely made me curious as to what project Jonathan will be involved in next. So this mm -hmm. dude is a guitarist for the group, but then he did a guest vocalist thing on this other group, and apparently he did a pretty good job. So it's like, what gives? All right, here we go. Song numero uno, Invisible Past, Jonathan Hulten and the Black Phoenix. Let's rock and roll, dear listener.
It's okay to be afraid mm, Time and time again We lose our way We are one 
Amazon account is up and running now. We are selling our formula officially. It's amazing stuff from Europe. May in Germany. So Highest standards there are. In America, the standards haven't been updated since 1980. It's super weird, like older than me. In Europe, they update safety standards basically every year. This formula is top notch, great for the stomach, great for constipation. Yeah. This is a great product. If you happen to want to purchase it and join us on our journey, then grab the link in the description. If you do and leave a review for us, send me a screenshot at vinandstory at gmail.com of your review after you have received the product. We will put your name in a hat. Song reviews are going to come out by some of the people that have left reviews. Don't forget to send us a screenshot of your review once you get the product. Now a word from our mascot dressed as a pirate, Fuji. Ah! It's a deal of a deal. That was crippled black phoenix okay i'm gonna i have to say <laughs> i was surprised by this pick neil i was like oh it's neil that picked it i know what <laughs> i know what we're walking into i think you're gonna get you're gonna get some violin you're gonna get some saxophone you're gonna get something like avant-garde with uh that well with dj neil Neil always has he likes the longer songs and he and a lot of them are like the the, the black and death metal yes. of you know like the yes. the crazier sounding stuff so I'm like I, that's exactly what I thought I was walking into and I was like oh okay and the song started I'm like yeah I know what's up yeah we got we got you figured out slow, Neil we got a slow start here do and your then all of a sudden, yeah do it, your hit, it hit different when DJ Neil made it it hit different yeah and then I'm like it's gonna it's gonna now it's about to get heavy and then like it just kind of stayed as this like thoughtful song the entire time. I was, yeah, I was I mean, very surprised Yeah, I mean, there were, like, that. heavy parts or metal parts or whatever you want to characterize yeah, that as. but it but wasn't at all what I, like I thought. Like, Yeah, it didn't go to the, it didn't, like, get to the cookie monster type of thing, which, like, I was waiting for that to happen at some point. It did. Then I changed my mind about um, the, the the song that we've been obsessing about for the last two days. Sleep Token. Sleep Take Token. Take Me to Eden. So, like, I've changed my mind. I love the rap part now. The rap part's my favorite part. Oh, my gosh. We both have changed on that. It's crazy. Right. So we probably should do another review on it at some point. But, like, your idea, because that actually made some sense. Now I don't like the way it ended. I don't like the heavy part at the end of that sleep token. Holy song. shit! Really? I, I don't. I don't like that part. No, I still do. I. I. I love. I obsess about that part. I love that desperate sound like he's getting back. Anyway, this is not about sleep token. Yeah. Um, um. We're we're doing good actually. We're doing we're doing good. I mean, you know we've got we've had some adversity, <laughs> but we're here. We're doing good. <laughs> Um, you know, like uh, 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 Biden has like this alter ego called Dark Branded. Oh, yes. And, <laughs> and like somebody almost made some mistakes and ran into Dark Story. Right. <laughs> Facts. Facts. So, somebody almost made a critical error. <laughs> <laughs> Talking all that reckless shit, babe. <laughs> <laughs> you, you better bless the gods that you didn't raise up your hand, you silly. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, like, like, this this song right here was, like, I, I think I missed out a little bit because I was waiting for the, blah, 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 blah. so, like, I was, like, kind of holding back because I'm, like, let me see where they're going to, because sometimes it's great and sometimes it ruins the song, so... I was like hedging my bets. Mm. I wouldn't open my heart up to embrace the song. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you see what I'm saying to you? <laughs> yeah, this one you would like is like one of those vibe songs that you just put on at night and like just like see that space stuff come by you. Shout like, out to the homie Applejack cool, gang shit. Cool Let's go. Um, yeah, like like that's kind of where I'm at with it. As far as like, yo, I'm waiting for them to like the shooter other the other shooter drop. So sonically, like that's one part. Lyrically, it was insane. It sounded like somebody like on a DMT trip explaining like, you know, sometimes dudes get back from a DMT trip and they mm -hmm. come back and like, dude, I know everything. Mm -hmm. Like I know one of my, mm -hmm. one of my like uh, close village buddies, like he was like documenting his, uh, his, his, his trip experiences or whatnot. And like he had taken this particular, you know, substance or whatnot that I'm not promoting the use of. And he came back, he's like, there is a God, Vin. And like, yeah, yeah. So like, it just seemed like like one of those situations where, you know. Yeah, I can see, I can see what you're saying there. Um, because it's like, a, it was thought provoking. And the person was kind of going through like, coming to the realization of like being alone. This part I thought was crazy. Um, 
it's okay to be af- okay. It's, it's okay, okay to, to be, be afraid. afraid. Yeah. That that M. I thought I thought I actually thought it said mum there, but it's M M M. Time and time again, we lose our way. We are one, never alone, but ever so lonely. I was like, yo, like I think that this that's that's something that a lot of us in the village experience. Like, we're I guess we're very aware of our own loneliness. Maybe everybody deals with loneliness, but I, I think that like in our village, like we're aware of our loneliness when we are lonely. Um, I think a lot of villagers have a hard time with that concept because a lot of them are also introverted. Yes. So like a lot of people like confuse that like that introverts never want to be around people. Mm-hmm. No, it just means that really the difference between intro and extroversion, the simplest way I've heard it is what gives you energy and what what depletes your energy that's 100 percent. yeah so you know, uh, uh, you know there's some people like who obviously everybody needs human sort of interaction but there's some people that get re-energized with some alone time mm-hmm. there are other people who when they're alone they're like ah what to do and they just sleep because they're like mm-hmm. Yeah, and or maybe, they have to be around they have to be around a lot of people yeah to like get their juices flowing and all that so yeah I, uh, Amy's an extroverted introvert. Like, but but the feeling of alone, the, the feeling of, of aloneness is one of those clues of God or the universe, whatever you want to put it. Yeah. That there's something deeper than the, the physical world. And I, I'm, what I mean by that is to say, you can be in physical proximity with hundreds of people who literally know your name and still feel lonely. Mm-hmm. Simultaneous to that, I could be in a car with you for three hours driving and be at the top of the world. And so how comes in A, you're around a bunch of other people and you're you're lonely, you're experiencing that as loneliness, but in B situation, you're not around a bunch of people, you're just around, you know, your special person and you don't feel alone. And that explains that there is an other side to the human being. That there's a metaphysical aspect to the human being. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you, you, you can't just say, well, oh, it's natural selection. It's like, well, wait a second. You've got, you've got some people who are introverted. They, they get their energy from being by themselves. you got other people that's extroverted. They get their energy by being around other people. It seems to me that we're unique beings that have uh, generalized similarities across the board, but those things among the individual gets meted out that way. But, but the point is, if the world was just physical, if reality was only physical, then it would almost be impossible to experience loneliness in a crowd, especially if you're like a quote famous person or the popular person. But right. most popular people that I've known and interacted with um, are extremely lonely at the height of their popularity. Yeah. Um, and it's it's the it's the dichotomy because because you're popular, you it means that you're there's something about you that's singular. That other people, either you're funny or you're smart or you're extremely good looking or whatever it is, whatever those constellation of attributes that made you popular also make also are rare in a person. That's why a popular that's why everybody isn't popular, just like everybody isn't beautiful. Sorry. But like that's why. And so the the downside of that is most people don't have the constellation of 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 attributes that that, that make people popular. So most people cannot relate to being that person. Mm-hmm. So the very thing that makes you popular is also a thing that makes you lonely. Se- separates you from everyone. Right, because yeah. nobody can relate to you, you yeah. know? So yeah. like that, that's a really big clue, like that there's something deeper going on than just our physical, just the physical body. People want to put that into your brain. They want to say, oh, it's your brain. It's like, okay, why is the introvert's brain upset about being in a crowd and the extrovert's brain is happy about being in a crowd like you mm. really think that that answer just solves everything like come on yeah do a little yeah. bit more thinking well, yeah. what were you thinking um well you know it was talking about the the loneliness and in our private shells we hide our our scared uh i'm sorry we hide scared we're imprisoned in our bubbles captive as captives of our own fear desperate in the dark i despaired in the dark sorry um that i think a lot about that the concept of what we do. Okay. So fear comes in to our lives and then what we do with that fear, it can, we can use it to, to motivate us to, so let's say, you know, you, you live in a, in a tropical place and hurricanes are something that you're afraid of, but they actually happen. 
um, and you sure up your house to make sure that the hurricane is not going to destroy your house. That fear, like it, cat it, it catapulted you into doing something that ended up protecting you. But there are a lot of times I think that our fear, like he said, it creates a bubble that we live in, but then it separates us from everybody else. And I, I think that that happens to a lot of us. And I think that before you realize, like by the time you realize it's a problem, you're already deep in it. Like I agree with that. And yeah. now it's hard to get back out because it's all you know. And people have gotten used to you being the person that does that. So they're like, oh, well, that's how he or she is. You know what I'm saying? Like, or um, they. So I, I kind of, you know, contemplating that. And then and then when, when it goes on in private little shells where we hide. Okay, again, the concept of fear. I need you to stop talking, please. Thank you. Um, the concept of fear and how much it can ruin your life really um i i think about and then i think about how the bible says 365 times don't be afraid or like trust in god and stuff like that and for me that's like key because it's like okay yeah you're dealing with fear but god is saying you don't have to be afraid like he's working out a plan and he's got something that he's doing but i think that if if you don't have that and you don't have God as, as a concept of something that you can you can be like okay like there is someone else in charge like it's I'm not I'm not like alone in this situation completely alone and and I noticed that at the end of the song he says whoops it's a different type of scroll um, love is all yeah all is mm -hmm. love and love but I, and I was all. just gonna read a little bit above it too we are dancing in a fleeting moment's grace in the short time we share we are a one. All on earth, deep down, we all know. At our cores, we are all the same. I, I just love that. Like, because we're, I, no, we're of the same one whole. That's even better. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then, um, at our cores, we are all the same one whole. And our spirits are its nature. Um, it's life that is blooming. And there is no doubt that all is love. Um, I'm not sure, like, what... He might have meant something like a little bit more broad with it, like you know, like like love as like a concept, but love is a person to us. So I, I don't, I'm not sure if he means it as a concept or a person. I, I took it as a person, um, and that there is an interconnection between all of us, and that um, I don't know, like I, I guess I long for the day that we all like see it. And then people start reaching out. Like for instance, I was thinking about capitalism the other day and thinking about how like you could buy something and then it'll like the batteries aren't included. And it's so annoying because like we we're in the business side of stuff. So we know how much like stuff costs. And when you are a big business to add like batteries into a package is not really going to, you know, affect the bottom line like a lot. Like it is going to affect the bottom line. But is it going to affect it a lot? So like I was thinking about how many times you buy something and like sometimes you're like, yo, that was a scam. That thing didn't really work. But then you don't want to return it because it's just too much work or it's it's whatever. But then I was thinking like imagine when things switch and then like capitalism in in its kind of vague sense is still um is still a is still a thing, but instead it's motivated by love. And so when somebody buys a product, they're not looking to see like how well how well is this product working or does it have the extra batteries? But instead they're like, how loving is this company really? Like, are they going to set you up with a kid's toy that doesn't have a battery? Because how many parents are so busy that they just grab the toy, get home and the batteries aren't there? Right. Like, so like if you had companies that were actually motivated by love and so companies that wanted to scam you and, and, and cheat you out of stuff would actually, they go away, they'd be done with because nobody's going to keep going with them. You want to go with a company that's going to actually you know, like want to set him and help people and stuff like that. Companies inspired by love. What a naive thought. Bottom line and profit are the only thing driving force that matters to them. Yeah, that's what it is now. But if if the entire culture had a switch and all of us were like, I'm not going to put my money at a business that clearly is just out for the bottom line and profit because there there are businesses, there are people that, that are running business. I mean, one of the reasons why we're doing the business that we're doing is because we want to see how many people that we can help. That doesn't mean that the bottom line isn't important. But it does mean that, you know, we're not going to sell, for instance, we sell baby formula. We're not going to sell you a baby formula that we don't believe in and we'll feed to our own children. Like, I love the formula that we have. I swear by it. It's yeah, amazing. I mean, 
Yeah. And and I'm not and I'm not gonna go down. I'm not gonna say, hey, Vin, we can make more money if we feed people people's kids, you know, crappy ingredients. We could though. We could, yeah, but we're not gonna do that because we love people and we love other people's children. You know, I mean, not the same way that we love our own, but we do love other people's children. And so, you know, just like we wouldn't want that for ours, we we want we want good for everybody else's kids. So yeah, that's gonna affect our bottom line. But at the end of the day, you know. We can be proud of what we're doing with our business. And so I just think when businesses can flip like that and things become about love, like um, love over fear always. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think that that's a reality. And I do think that there are a lot of love motivated companies. But when you have a system that is is capital motivated, mm -hmm. and I, I include socialist countries as well in, in that. Because that's kind of like one of the things, like, oh, it's like capitalists are the only greedy, money-hungry people. That, that's not true. Socialists are are Can same you give way. an example of... Oh, well, for, for example, for example, the UK is a socialist country, supposedly. But, I mean, you've got soccer players that are making $20 million a year. You see what I'm saying? So, and then you've got soccer companies that are worth billions. So... Like the idea, just because they're in a socialist country doesn't mean that they, they mm -hmm. don't have companies that are still horrible and terrible and all the rest of it. You still have to have regulating bodies over there. It's not like, oh, it's a socialist paradise, so now we don't need to regulate anything. Mm -hmm. Why would you need to regulate anything if people were completely love-based? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, I see what you're saying. I just think a lot has to happen culturally before we even get to that point. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think that that will happen kind of like organically and naturally once, um, you know, we we enter the golden age, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's a that's a really that's a really cool goal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. a, it's a it's a goal to have for sure for sure. Um, but yeah, like I I the the song was just like I was surprised at how explicitly kind of spiritual it was. Like yeah. this dude came out of a doom metal band. He's talking about all of us are connected. Yeah. And he talked, it was interesting because, because he talked about feeling small. By the stars. Um, there you are gazing at the stars, seeing how small we are. Wondrous as, as it seems here and now. We are alive as an eternity, blink, eternity blinks an eye. You know, it, it's a famous line. Uh, in him we live and move and have our being. Mm -hmm. And that was, um, I think that was an Epicurean uh stoic that said that but paul quotes it obviously in act yeah. 17 but that's just a fascinating idea like if you are a theist like think about it so like remember i was telling you about ufos and plasma mm -hmm. and, and so like there there will be this like glob of of there's like one craft in the air and then all of a sudden it splits off into two equally sized and then it splits off into three or yeah. whatever and then yeah. they like fly away or whatever it's like if if because God is non physical, like just idealistically speaking, what were the materials that He used to make the planet then? Because He's a non physical being, so what materials did He use to create create the world? And then whatever that is, is that thing outside of Him? Because when we talk about God as Creator, we we almost talk about it like He's in a wood shop. It's like oh, He went to create the world, blah blah blah. It's like the wood shop is like outside of the. The, the guy making it. Interesting, yeah. Right? But like... Yeah, because even with the wood shop, you have all the things there and then you utilize It's those. outside of him. Yeah. But, but that's if not... God created everything, yeah. there was no wood shop. He right, was not right. sitting in a wood shop and organize... See, what we call inventions are simply the manipulation and the reorganizations of already here material. Mm -hmm. But there was no material. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, obviously... Castrop stuff, Don Hoffman stuff, sort of the Kantian philosophy where, like, you're not seeing the thing in itself and, um, you know, physical and all these other physical stimuli aren't mm -hmm. necessarily actually real. They're just kind of, like, programmed. <coughs> and it's like, that makes a lot of sense to me in the sense of, yeah, like, that, and, and so listen to the, it says, in him, we live and move and have our being. Mm -hmm. So we have our being in God because this room is not like it's created by the wood and the ceramic or whatever mm -hmm. outside of him. It was, it came, and think about it, it came directly from his mind. And that's what we see where he says a word and then boom. So it's like, 
if God created an earth, the earth would have to be inside of him, right? That's why, you know, when Solomon was, was building the temple, he said, but could God really dwell on the earth? Even the heavens and the heavens of heavens cannot contain you. Okay, that, that means that nothing contains God, but he contains everything else. Like, that's the other thing. It's like, when people, like, think about God, they think about, like, a humanoid figure that mm -hmm. lives someplace mm -hmm. that is big enough to contain him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, you have throne room scenes in, in, like, Revelation and such. Like, he's sitting down in a room, and he's sitting down in a throne, and the room is bigger than him. Yep. <laughs> right? Right? So, like... Yeah. That's like obviously, what an interesting thought. <laughs> obviously, that can't be right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the he contains the room. The room does not contain him. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, and then you think to yourself, okay, that is a mind. Okay, that 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 is a, like a supercomputer, deluxe whatever computer type mind. And then what is the, what is a mind like that thinking about? And the Bible tells us that like at the core of the divine mind is, is love. Right. And like, that was kind of like the message of interstellar where like, you know, it was love ultimately that was the ultimate fabric of the universe. And that's why like, he still had that connection with his daughter, even though he had missed all that time with her. And he was like... I'm not going to tell anybody because I don't know if anybody, if you're like five people who haven't seen the movie Interstellar, <laughs> but you know, I was actually on a trip when I, when I, when I uh, saw that movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I was outside. I was talking to you about something while I was like waiting for dude. And then, you know, like. Are you serious? Yeah. And then I was like, ah, oh, I got to go. And then, eh. And then after that, like, I was like, ah, oh, well, I had like two hours, three hours to spare. No kidding. I was like, yo, what y'all want me to do? It's like, oh, okay, yeah, you're good. Come wow. back home. So I was like, oh, okay, I got two hours. So I went to see Interstellar, went to another hotel, and then came back home. But wow. anyway, uh, Interstellar, like, that was kind of the idea. Like, all the things and the epic nature of the movie and it's getting back to his daughter and blah, blah, blah. And it was like, love was like the ultimate, you know, you talk about super string theory, like what's underneath the last, mm -hmm. you know, irreducible, yeah. you know. And and its love and it's was love. The, was the point of the movie, but like, it definitely it definitely like seems that way, you know. Like it definitely seems that when these people have near death experiences or when they have experiences with good non human intelligences, which is funny. Like I feel a little bit validated because when we first started the channel, I used to talk about intelligent dark intelligences that were bad we're malevolent mm -hmm. and now like non-human intelligence is like a is part of the nomenclature yeah, now yeah, yeah you can yeah. thank your boy <laughs> but like not not all of those guys are good guys you know yeah. like according to the to the to the whistleblowers not all of them are good yeah and but it's interesting because like there have been documented situations where some of these ets have healed people yes like I've heard medically that too. healed yeah. people um, but for the most part, people are, people have some sort of damage or destruction or whatever. And so like, but the point that I'm saying is, is like the, the, the hugeness of the universe and the grandeur of the universe is what I was, I wish I would have kept the clip. It was Richard Dawkins. And he was talking about if he had 24 hours to live, what he'd want to do. And he basically said he'd want to get shot basically into a supernova or something like that. You know, a big oh, black, really? black hole. Yeah. Because he got 24 hours to live anyway, and he just like wants to see all the stars and whatever. Because he's basically like, I wait, mean, you're talking about a black hole? Gra I mean, yeah, I mean, no. gravity would destroy you in an instant. In my, I am assuming. Yeah, but, but he was talking about wanting to like go right into the eye of a of a black hole and all the crazy shit that yeah, you would see before like... you died. But what's fascinating to me is like, you know, the first person that put me onto this principle was John Piper, who said that. We know intrinsically that we are made to experience joy from glory. Because that's Piper's main thesis about all existence, is that we are here to experience joy because of the sight of something glorious. And that, that's, that's his entire premise to the meaning of life. And obviously okay. the sight of that glorious thing would be God. But Richard Dawkins is talking about he wants to see what would that would be like it's you go past the galaxies and stars or whatever as everybody's being sucked into this kind of singularity type thing you're in the middle of a black hole because you only have 24 hours anyway yeah. but what's fascinating to me is like 
people have the biggest reaction when they experience something that makes them feel small. So like, oh right, oh right. If I were to say, who wants to see a UFO? Like most people, would be like holy shit. One because of the novelty, we've never seen it before. But two, almost everybody says they were doing things that we could never do. Yep. Yep. And it's fascinating because when a human can do something that that you can't do, most of the time you get jealous. But this this thing was doing something the entire species couldn't do, and mm. instead of being jealous. They were obviously fascinated with it. Mm-hmm. They became obsessed with it type of mm-hmm. thing. And so, like, John Piper made, made the argument, nobody goes to the Grand Canyon. Why is the Grand Canyon a, 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 a tourist resort? Nobody goes there to feel, to increase their self-esteem. Mm-hmm. You go there to actually purposely put yourself in a situation where you're the smallest thing there. Yeah, yeah. And, and you are absorbing just the grandeur of this thing and saying, holy shit, like, any time that you feel small in the wake of something that God has done, whether it's like a, a, tor- a, a tornado or a hurricane, yeah. there is that fear, you could die, but there's also that, holy shit, right? This thing is bigger than us. This yeah. thing is, ma- and, you know, yeah. so, so, so it, it is fascinating when he talks about being made to feel small because, again, there's a way to be made to feel small which says a person is cutting you down, trying to humiliate you, blah, 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 belittle you. Right? The right. term be little means be to small. make you little. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yet, at the same time, we want to go to see movies. That, like, I remember like watching a special about Star Wars when the, like, you probably don't know this, but like, they, it starts with this giant ship coming down and the, the, the letters are going up telling the story and it's just this giant ship and there seems to be no end of it. Mm-hmm. Like, that. Wow. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> kids. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Teenagers. That's not safe, though. No, it's not. Um, everybody who wants to be in those situations, you want to feel small. Mm. But you don't feel belittled. Right. You feel exhilarated. Mm-hmm. So, like, Piper was the first one to put that together. Like, there di- there's a difference between being belittled and feeling small. Yeah, those are not the same they thing. They're not. They're not. One is what you were created for. Yeah. And one is the opposite of what you were created for. Right. Because in a Christian kind of worldview, the more glory you see, the more glorious you become. Mm. So that's the reason why you want to feel small at the Grand Canyon. Because there's you're going to bring back some of that glory with you when you tell your friends or whatever. Mm. Or the perspective that you get out of that experience, again, yeah. is, is something that... So anytime you're in a situation where you feel small because you're seeing something glorious, you get you get upgraded. Mm-hmm. The reason we feel jealous or hurt when we're belittled is because, one, we're comparing ourselves to other human beings, right? And, and we want what they have because, we're, because both of us are, are playing around with small shit. So anytime you're jealous of anybody, it's because you're focused on small shit. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the quickest ways to, like, an antidote to jealousy is to look at the big picture. Is to realize, like, I'm only here for X amount of years. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's like nine, the 90s were like yesterday. You're talking about the 90s and this MTV show, Sex in the 90s, all the rest of it. Like, it, the time just goes by yeah. like that, you know. Yeah. I've got a son. He's flying out. You know, he's getting flown all around by the GOP, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like, <sighs> the time is so small that it, you know it, it's it's and it, it's interesting like i think culturally we're at such a tipping point where like we're gonna sink or swim with this principle yeah you know we really really are so it, it's it's just such a fascinating um thing to look at especially from a guy who's in a doom band and mm-hmm. all the rest of it when yeah. he comes when he comes to the to the conclusion that um all is love at the end and 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 all that like it's incredible. I mean, yeah. and that's that's the another way to say the meaning of life is to love and be loved, and to know and be known. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, man, it was just a pretty it was a pretty hectic thing to listen to. Yeah, I really I enjoyed it. It was it, the it it was so thought provoking. I felt, you know, like this is this is something I'd like to listen to when I I know one hundred percent I will have no interruptions. Um, it's definitely a song that you want to like. You know how there are fragile thoughts that you have that Dwayne in the house you, you should only let you should only like work through when you have the time to actually work through um, I feel like this song is like good for for those sorts of 
thoughts. Um, I really enjoyed it. Totally surprised me, Neil. I didn't know. <laughs> I, Neil, you know how there's like character development? Yes. <laughs> we are villagers. It's the same thing. Because <laughs> we've known you guys for years. For years. And like you guys throw stuff to us and then, you know, we, we get different, different ideas of who you are. So, yeah. So, Neil just... You know, his character expanded tonight. In yeah, opinion, he did. He did. In, in, my, in my view of you. So, um, yeah, I thought it, I, I liked it. it. Man, I'm actually. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what you're going to do with this scoring here. Yeah, I guess I'm having a little bit of trouble with the scoring because um, it's definitely high. Probably like a 9.8. I feel. I Okay, this is what I would say. It's a 9.8 for me tonight. But I have high hopes for this song that it's going to actually just keep increasing and eventually it's going to end up at 11. But it's a 9.8 right now because... You know, it's really rare for me that a song goes up when I listen to it again. Yeah. They usually go down. Yeah, sometimes they go down. I'm like, yo. The uh, Back to Eden song went up. Oh, man. Uh, there, there's a couple songs that went up, but those are like my regular, like, mm -hmm. cannot go a day playlist. Mm -hmm. Shout out to all the people in the in the chat. We shall return, dear Wait, listener. Wait, what'd you give it? The night has just begun. I'm giving this song a 9.6. I wish it would have went a little bit different places. Um, I would have liked a, a nice little tremolo, maybe a little violin key section. Uh -huh. Because what he was saying was so beautiful and ethereal that I wish it, you know, they would have went like a little bit spacey with it, maybe with some yeah, effects. I felt like it. With some melodic yeah. effects. I would have yeah. liked that. But, you know, it's all good. It's all it's good. All it's all, all right. good, 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 good. All right. Well, wait. So hey, you give it a my what? man, David Johannes Hayes. What's good, buddy? Did you give it a nine point five? What'd you give? It? Uh, nine point six, I say. Oh, nine point six. Okay. Well, there you have it. Um, we will be right back. We have more songs on the playlist tonight, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you after the break. Yes, we will, dear listener. We will see you after the break.